What is up, everyone? All right, so today is kind of a different book review because it is a book that I have not read. So how can I review a book that I haven't read? Like, that seems, like, unfair to the author and, like, maybe the author's a good person. Guys, the author's not a good person. That's what we're going over today in this book review. So... Look, yeah, politics, like, whatever, whatever. Obviously, I'm more on the left at basically everyone in the Trump administration. I disagree with where they land politically. It's different with John Bolton, though. Um, First, we got to talk about the staff abuse. Now, for context, Republicans are the most likely party I think I've ever seen to stick by their own. So, as an example, Brett Kavanaugh, nominated as a Supreme Court justice. Allegations of sexual assault come out against Kavanaugh. All but one Republican vote for him, even with these allegations. Keep that in mind, how united Republicans are when it comes to defending their own. John Bolton needed six no votes for him to not get a position a cabinet position in the Bush administration. And his allegations of abusing his staff were so numerous, credible, and egregious that even six Republicans in the most, you know, fall-in-line party I've ever seen were like, absolutely not. No, we just can't vote for someone who abuses their staff like this. So, obviously, he's a bad person. Um... Now, but Greg, he hates Trump. Like, don't don't you not like Trump? And like, uh, like you say bad things about Trump. Like, I follow you on Twitter, and like, eh, yeah, sure, I don't like Trump either. But that doesn't mean everyone else who doesn't like Trump is automatically a good person, and we should buy their book. Now, I'll listen to some John Bolton allegations. Um against Trump or against whoever. Some of them are probably true, or at least somewhat true. John Bolton was obviously one of the Bush officials who lied us into the Iraq War, which is the largest government lie of my lifetime, or at least the most costly one when it comes to American lives, civilian lives, money, basically most costly in every way, international credibility. So yeah, he was part of that. Um, I think there are some people who kind of maybe sort of learned some lessons from that, but are still have bad politics in my estimation, but maybe they're like kind of evolved to some extent. Like Max Boot, a writer for the Washington Post, who was a huge cheerleader for the war in Iraq, as an example, he realized in 2016 that racism still exists. So, I mean, you know, very small steps, like very baby steps with some of these people, but like steps nonetheless has in the past and continues to this day to cheerlead every possible war imaginable. He's advocated within the last two years of invading Venezuela. Why would we invade Venezuela? Do you guys know why we would invade Venezuela? I don't know why we'd invade Venezuela. Is Maduro a good person? No. Do we want to invade every country who has a dictator or someone who is a bad person leading the country? I don't think that's what we should do. Uh, It seems like uh, we don't have the military for that, and we have the largest military ever to exist. Guys, I don't know why I'm whispering into the mic. But of course, that's not all. He wants war with Iran. Um, He undermined peace talks between South Korea and North Korea. And South Korea has strongly contested his allegations made in the book about the peace talks. He said South Korea didn't have a plan or something. Which seems far-fetched to me. They, I, it, what seems way more likely is that South Korea did have a plan, and the plan was to try to become more peaceful with North Korea. And Bolton 
of course, does not like that plan because Bolden wants war. So yeah, staff abuse, liar, doesn't learn from his lies, or like double, triple, quadruple. He's, I mean, he, he, he must have doubled down like three million times on being super pro-war by now since the huge mistake to go into Iraq in 2002. I think like according to polls, like 8% of people think we should be in Iraq right now. I'm not, I'm not even sure if like over like 20% of people know we're still at war in Iraq. I like <laughs> I'm not confident. Honestly, I could dunk on Bolton all day. And again, it doesn't mean everything he says is untrue. Take his claims and evaluate them yourself. Just don't buy his book because like I said, he's a liar or if you want to view him super charitably, he made a huge mistake with the Iraq war and didn't learn from it. He has like a radical view of the world. Honestly, I would say his view of the world is probably more radical than Donald Trump's. So any criticisms of Donald Trump from him are coming from a radical place. And yeah, I mean, like when someone is either so dishonest or just so wrong all the time, it's very difficult to evaluate his claims and figure out fact from fiction from like half truth and you know it's it's too much work to parse out all his nonsense it really is and i'm sure some reporters you know they're gonna try their best and you know, you know whatever it is what it is i'm sure his book will be on the new york times bestseller uh regardless of my video if i persuade like two people not to buy his book you know that's that's a huge success and yeah I know I'm like half asleep during this video, uh, but hopefully this was helpful to you or someone and like, comment, subscribe and see ya.